So I've talked about this before, but the pouring height and the way you pour matters a lot more than what people think. And if you're given a recipe, sometimes things don't work out because you pour differently than what you're expected to do. Now, for example, if you were to be given a recipe that expected you to have a long bloom, like a minute long bloom, okay? These long blooms are, for a while, were really popular. But the problem with long blooms is once you've kind of off-gassed, um, what happens is there's less repelling force from the beans and the water. And that just means your water is going to be able to fully absorb all the flavors right from the get-go. But because it's gotten a lot heavier, it sinks and it stays at the bottom. So when you pour, what you really want to do is actually pour really fast down the middle to kind of just lift everything up. And this way you don't get as much clogging as you would generally do. And so when you're given a, a different recipe, the way you pour and just thinking about how you change your pour can actually make your coffee taste a lot better. So um, to today's video, I wanted to talk about the differences in pouring height and pouring speed and how that can actually affect your coffees. So the two main things we'll be talking about is the height and the speed of the pour itself. Now, the higher you pour from, the more time it gets to be affected by gravity. And so it'll be a little bit faster when it hits whatever's in the drip at the time. On the contrary, if you've got a, a lower pour, it's going to be a little bit more gentle because it doesn't have as much time, right? And so that's why having a kettle like the Buono, which has a long spout, matters. It's because it gets to the middle a little bit easier than some of the other popular kettles on the market. I use the Bonavista um, or the Barista. And the other popular one is the Fellow. Now, the Fellow has a very tall spout. And so kind of getting into the middle of the dripper might actually put you at a disadvantage because you're pouring from such a high height. Now, on the other hand, you, we've also got the speed, right? So if we're pouring naturally at a faster speed, we're going to have it go even faster. And so these affect the way it kind of comes in contact with the beans, especially the initial hit. I think the initial part of the brew really sets the tone for how your coffees are going to absorb the water. As you guys can tell, I probably talk about a little bit more of the theory and the experimental side of things. I don't use a lot of science, so it's a little bit easier for people to kind of just understand. But if you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the guy behind all these coffee ideas. I'm a little bit more theoretical and I just try to logically reason things out. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest ideas. So let's start with the beginning of the brew, the initial contact. Now, when you have dry grinds and then you kind of just pour your water in it, this is when all the gases are being given off. Well, I mean, that's just how it happens, right? Now, if you think about it, the faster you pour, the stronger you're going to be hitting it. Now, I've talked about this before, but the gases given off actually repel the water. So it's going to help you push it down through the dripper faster. So the faster you pour initially, the faster it's going to kind of drip out. So you always want to start low and slow because having a lower and a slower pour allows you to have a more gentle contact with the grinds. And what happens is the water starts to just sit on the top without actually going down because it's not trying to force its way down. It's just trying to just sit there. And then the water almost starts to hydroplane. So if you pour low and slow, you're going to get a longer first drip contact. And so it has more time to absorb all the flavors before dripping out. Now, when it comes to the middle section, it really depends on the beans itself. Sometimes you have lighter roasts or you have darker ones, which have more gases. The gases almost help you lift your grinds. And I've talked about it in the single pour ideas before that the idea behind brewing is to always just lift the grinds into the middle of the dripper. And this way you can have each particle be wrapped around by each, uh, by the water. And so you get full extraction for each particle. Um, and so with lighter roasts that give off less gases, you want to pour slow, but then you want to speed up quite quickly because this helps you get to the bottom and lift. Now, for you to get to the bottom, you want to pour with more force. Now, there's this pouring speed, or you can pour from higher. I generally think because you're already starting low, it's best to just go low and then pour with more strength because you don't need that much agitation in a lighter 
roast. Now on the other side, if you've got a darker coffee, you want to pour high, but you want to pour slow because you want to lift all the grinds up without, with more agitation. The higher you pour from, the more agitating it will get. And the, if you pour from really high points, you can even get the droplets, which is more surface level. I'll be showing you guys um, all of this in just a sec, but um, right now you should just, just kind of listen to this, but it's like if you pour from high and slow, you're gonna get more surface level kind of damage and you're gonna be attacking the grinds on a more surface level. So it's really useful for medium or darker grinds or darker coffees that give off more gases. Um, and then for the middle ones, you can kind of just play around. Um, it's about like just making sure you hit each particle and you lift it all up. Um, and that's why you need to control your speed. Your speed determines how fast things float. But sometimes if you pour all your water, you're not going to be able to attack all the grinds that have floated up. And that will lead to an under extraction entirely. So a good brew is when you really just make sure your water hits all the grinds that have floated to the top. So when you have a lighter roast, because it sinks faster, you want to start slow, speed up towards the middle, and then lift everything. And then with the remaining... Um, towards the middle end of the brew um, with the remaining water you could probably just hit all the grinds that float to the top and call it a day whereas with the darker coffees I like to start slow low and slow um, and then as it lifts up I kind of lift my hand up as well but I don't really speed up because I know it needs a lot more force to kind of hit all the grinds so um, let's get right over to the other side I know what I said was kind of maybe a little bit confusing but I'm going to show you guys um, how the different water streams um, pull the water or the pull the grinds down and and yeah um, so yeah let's get right into the other side and let's start some experiments so what we've got here now is um, just this beaker full of water okay um, and I'm going to show you guys by layering some grinds okay if it would just come out by layering some grinds um, because if, if the water doesn't pass through the coffee, um, you're not going to get much, um, much movement at all or much movement at all. So what we're going to do is just, we're going to pour really nice and slow and low, and you can see how the water pushes all the grinds down. Now from that you can just see that it's quite gentle. Um, we haven't really pulled anything from the upper layer. It's just kind of moving down in the bottom. Um, you guys can notice that some of it has sank, but some of the grinds are still floating. Um, so it takes actually quite a bit more um, agitation than you'd expect. Obviously this beaker was filled with cold water and that's why it's gonna have less agitation as well. But uh, let's move on to the next one. So now we're gonna set up once again for A second pour. Um, this one, I think it's better to use a little bit more grounds. Shows it a little bit better. But we're going to pour low and fast. And you can see how the direction of the pour kind of shapes the direction of the movement. Whereas in the low and slow, it was more of a vertical one because of how slow it is. Um, the direction of the pour actually causes a lot of agitation as well. So when you're pouring into your dripper, um, do take note of how strong it is because um, for you to actually keep it more in the middle, uh, if you pour it down the middle, that line is just gonna cause a lot of agitation there. Now, if you wanna take a look at the top, um, the top actually stayed kind of intact. Um, and, and that is just because the low and strong pour actually just puts a lot more movement deeper, uh, attacks the one point at the top, but that's it. And it just creates a lot more strength in, in the lower section. And um, so yeah, uh, let's go on to the next one. So for this one, I'm just going to fill it up with less water um, so that we can have more height, quote unquote height. Um, and you can see the difference. Uh, we're, once again, we're just gonna layer the beans as best as possible, I guess from a lower, if it's 
too low, it's hard to get the, the grinds to stay floating, but Um, so we're going to do a higher pour, but a slower pour, and you can just see how it just causes a lot of agitation on the upper side. Um, not sure if you guys saw that, so let's try to get a zoomed in look on this, but it just causes a lot of movement on the upper side, not a lot on the... Um, anywhere else um, causes a lot of agitation. You can see because it was poured from a higher point that it's a lot murkier down here. Um, a lot more grinds get kind of pulled down. So when we have um, lighter roast, it's going to attack it and it's just going to push all the grinds down a little bit more. Um, just in any roast actually. Um, this is the most agitating form of pour you could have um, simply because the the droplets or even if you were to have a slow stream it causes it to oh well it causes it to kind of hit and cause a lot of motion on the lower side um, and and that's why I think you should use um, a, a low uh, sorry a high and slow pour for a medium to darker roast that's giving off more gases um, so that you can attack the grinds more properly. But yeah, let's get into the last one. So here we've kind of set up for the last pour. Um, this is going to be a high and strong one or fast one. Um, notice that it just creates a lot of motion on the underside so it causes a lot of damage down, down here. But because it's lifting a lot of the grinds up and because um, medium to darker grinds have more um, gases, it repels the water and just lifts really quickly. Whereas for lighter coffees, um, if you were to pour from a higher and stronger point, you're basically um, causing a lot of agitation on the lower side, which is good for um, uh, lighter coffees because you're lifting it up really quickly at the same time. So by the time you get to the top, or you've almost finished your your the, the amount of water you want to pour in, um, you're only left with the crust left that's just floating at the top. So I'm going to actually be showing you guys a lighter roast and then a medium to dark roast and how um, changing the pour makes all the difference. So here I have two of the exact same coffees um, on the left. Um, this is actually a light to medium roast. It's my single pour coffee that I roast. I got a coffee based after my technique. But it's from Brazil and it sinks relatively quickly so I wanted to show you guys how pouring low and slow versus high and slow so the difference in height matters. On the left we'll be pouring right up against it and nice and slow. Um, if you want a quick tip, if you want to pour um, closer you can actually fill your kettle with a little bit less water which I shall do right now. Um, so yeah, uh, you're going to start in the middle. And then we're just going to stay nice and slow. And as it kind of lifts up, you can see that it's quite gentle. None of the gases are just kind of erupting violently. Um, and the edges are now starting to show. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get to the, to the sides, break the crust. And then we're just going to go back into the middle and stay there. Um, the low and slow also works quite well for a lighter roast like this because it doesn't create too much agitation which allows you to lift. I prefer personally to um, have a higher volume in, in my coffees um, or I, I prefer to lift a little bit higher so um, towards, the, towards the middle end um, I would normally speed up just a little bit. But on the other side, I'm just going to show you guys um, what the difference between kind of pouring low and slow versus high and slow is. You're going to notice that right off the bat, it just causes a lot more gases. Um, obviously, you can start a little bit lower, but even then, it creates a lot of gases at the bottom. Um, 
you could attribute that to me starting with a higher pour or a, a slower pour. But as it goes, we should be lifting with it just to continue the height difference. We'll give this a quick stir. So this one finished a while ago, I guess. Um, I, I think it was around the one minute and 50. Then you're gonna get bigger bubbles on the side. Um, and it's already at the one minute and 10 seconds and you can just see how much slower it's kind of flowing down. Um, We've hit about the same timer already. It's 150 and there's still a lot of liquid on the surface level. So this goes to show that the higher and slower pour, it causes a lot of agitation, mostly on the surface level. Notice how everything has already sank. You can already, you can tell because there's this clear, ah! clear line right there. Um, and then the edges are already showing to be a lot more pasty. So we're just going to let this finish quickly. So that was a three minute brew, um, quite a long brew, honestly. Uh, let's take a look. The dome itself looks pretty nice on the high and slow one. You can see, um, how it's got a nice shape to it. The middle is still granular, but the edges are really pasty. Um, the little, the middle is actually a little bit more pasty than I would like it to be. Let me see if I can turn up the brightness to show you guys. Um, yeah, the middle is a little bit more pasty than I would like it to be. Whereas for this one, um, it's got, it's got all the good signs. Um, it's got a good bed shape. It's got a good amount of fines on the side, but the center is a little bit more granular than I would like it to be. So when brewing with a lighter roast, it's better to kind of speed up towards the middle once you've almost lifted everything up. And this allows you to create a little bit more agitation to fully extract it before it kind of sinks down. Um, when you have darker roasts or more gassy coffees, um, you want to go higher and slower earlier to create more of this effect um, or this kind of result um, in the middle time and then you would um, go back to attacking it slowly from a lower and potentially um, higher speed pour. Um, so just be cognizant and just think about how you uh, pour. It does really affect your brew and the outcome that you are looking for. So let's get back to the other side and just quickly talk over my, my final thoughts. Now, obviously, uh, the, the pouring technique itself, like whether you pour high, slow, fast, low, whatever it is, um, it really is, today's video is just the basics behind it. But uh, I think just showing you guys how high and slow versus low and slow make a big difference. Now, obviously, you have to be very careful of where you pour as well. Um, when you pour, you always want to hit the, the grinds that are floating to the top. And this is whatever floats up. Uh, those are the un, un kind of attacked coffees. There's not enough agitation or there's not enough force applied to it. So you kind of have to add some more force to it. Um, if you lift all your grinds too quickly by pouring too quickly and not having enough room at the end to finish your pour by slowing down and, and agitating all of them, um, you might run into a little bit of trouble uh, with under extraction on some grounds. You can tell um, that happens when the grinds just kind of sit towards the edge of the walls. Um, I did a video a while back where if I showed if the wall water doesn't get to flow through the beans, it just hasn't fully extracted. Um, and that can be because the gases are just repelling it. So make sure you get all those floaters down and then just use the different ideas behind, you know, pouring fast or slow or high or low um, to your advantage. It really depends on your beans and the, the type of, you know, roast it really is. Um, if you bloom, maybe going low and slow and then speeding up to create the, 
to, to allow the momentum to just lift it all up might be the better choice. Um, for me, I still stick to the single pour, which I always start low and slow. Like I think regardless of anything, you should always just start low and slow. Going low and slow allows you to just gently agitate your beans um, and then lifting it. And then as it kind of lifts, you can speed up. Uh, I would never really go too fast, to be honest. I think um, going a little bit faster than 40 seconds. I normally finish around like the 30 seconds myself, 35 seconds. So I'm not really speeding up too much more than a slow pour. And yeah, with some of the other kettles, like obviously ones with better control, like the Buono or the Time Warp, you can get really slow. Um, and I've noticed that really slow ones because you're at, you're agitating and you're lifting up the grinds over such a long time, um, you can actually create a lot of over uh, agitation. So going slow causes a lot of um, agitation as well, but because of time and how fast you're draining it. Um, so yeah, hope you guys like this video. Um, if you guys did, make sure to leave a like, a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, I actually try my best to answer and reply to almost every comment um, possible. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's, it's all about sharing different ideas. So let me know. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.